we're going to take a look at some early postcards of the area around Notting Hill Gate Station. These images originate on Dave Walker's excellent Library Time Machine blog from the Library Service of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. The unidentified photographers responsible for capturing the following images were operating independently on the streets, driven by speculation and the ambition to sell their photographs to postcard publishers later. They predominantly worked during daylight hours when the streets were full of activity. In each of the following postcards we'll take a look at the full postcard and then zoom in on the action and catch a flavour of the individual lives of the people in them. Here is Notting Hill Gate, looking west. On the southern side of the street is Henry Hobson Finch's Hoop Tavern, William J. Tame, fruiterer, his staff are loading a delivery wagon, and Matthew Pittman, stationer. This is the corner of Silver Street, then the name for the northern section of Kensington Church Street, about 1904. There's a rather dejected looking girl standing next to the delivery wagon. In the foreground left is a woman with a pram. Her gaze is fixed on the display to her right. She stands with straight arms, pushing the front wheels of the pram slightly off the ground, seemingly preparing to move it from the pavement. The sleeves of her dress exhibit a distinctive leg of mutton style, snug to the elbows and then expanding dramatically, a fashion trend that would peak in the early 1900s. It's as if we are glimpsing a snapshot of her daily routine in action, there's a boy who has spotted the camera. Along the northern side of the street, a man employs a hooked pole to retract a shop's awning. He remains attentive to an approaching woman, mindful that water drops might fall on her. We'll zoom in on that motor bus. The starter arm is situated beneath the radiator, suggesting that this is an early model. The engine block's low placement further supports this as later models were higher off the ground for improved undercarriage protection and enhanced driver visibility. Horlick's malted milk, in the advert, didn't make its way to the UK until 1890. Horse-drawn and motor buses coexisted for some years before the horse-drawn versions were superseded in the early 1900s. We can see the Notting Hill Gate Central Line Station, positioned at the intersection with Pembridge Road, and this is clearer in the next shot of Notting Hill Gate, just a little further west. The Central Line Station was on the other side of the road from the Metropolitan Line. The street on the right is Pembridge Gardens. On the left, you can see the buildings on the west side of Pembridge Road. There are people waiting for the horse bus, but it looks pretty full. The woman walking briskly away from the scene exudes the demeanour of a passenger who has just disembarked and is eager to resume her journey on foot. This is the view looking north along Pembridge Road from Notting Hill Gate. Most of these buildings are still there, but the shops, and of course the people, have changed. In close-up it seems that the girl is waiting impatiently for her mother to finish talking to her friend or perhaps they are waiting to cross the road. Here we're at another bustling street scene at Notting Hill Gate. This is the Metropolitan Underground Station and another bus covered with adverts. All the figures in this picture are interesting in some way. Are the bearded man and his younger companion out for a leisurely stroll or are they pursuing some business venture? This is a view of Gilston Road, somewhat to the south. The church in the background is St Mary the Boltons. There are grand suburban villas and the two women who have paused for the photographer are respectably middle class. Back to the area of Notting Hill Gate Station, this is Pembridge Gardens. On the left, you can see a woman and her maid. It's unusual to see a household servant on the street. The scenario unfolds with a sense of mystery, perhaps hinting at a special delivery or an errand entrusted to the servant. The woman on the street, possibly the lady of the house, appears content to remain at a distance, allowing the servant to handle the task. Their roles remain enigmatic, allowing room for imagination to weave a narrative of a bygone era, where the daily interactions of life carry secrets and stories lost to time. <laughs> 